Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Study Vlogs. Welcome back to another show of mine. This is uh, your Premier Division, I suppose, review and preview, really. I suppose the preview would be more predictions, but not a great week in the League of Ireland. Uh, Premier Division every week seems to be good these days, doesn't it? And we'll start off at Daily Man Park and finish Bohemians 2, Derry City 2, and a uh, very, very good game with this. Very entertaining game, a lot of goals, a lot of chances. Um, Derry third in the league in 47 Bowles fourth in the league in 47 but Derry do have a game in hand to find themselves now though uh, seven points adrift of Shamrock Rovers they do have that game in hand which is against UCD so they'd like to think they'll make that four but there's games come up, upcoming this weekend before we even get that so the, the points total could change it could uh, they could get tighter they could go further away but I think Derry would be disappointed with this one to be honest which I, they feel like they should have won the game if I'm honest Um. You know, Bowles obviously took the lead after 13 minutes. A very good goal from the informed James Clark. Uh, took it very confidently. Lovely true ball, actually, with Paddy Kerr to find him. And it's a lovely finish to give Bohemians the lead. Duffy equalises soon after. Uh, good play by Declan McMullen. Uh, Bowles will be disappointed they didn't clear it, I feel, though. And, you know, Duffy has space inside the box and finishes and makes it one all. Did a couple of other chances then, Derry as well. And... Uh, Mullen scored his first goal for the club with a loop and header on 42 minutes. Again, Bowles will be disappointed with the defending with this one as well, won't they? They um they cleared it, but then you know, just it's a normal ball just lobbed in by Kieran Call and they don't deal with it. Uh Casper doesn't get up at all, and Mullen makes it 2 1. And Bowles would or Derry would have been happy with that. Bowles got a penalty in 53. And if I was Rory Higgins, so I'd have gone mad about this. Not about the decision, but about uh, the play from Diallo. I mean Good ball to Clark to get uh, McDonald through, and he's coming on the inside of that line. But Diallo, even if he can't get there, he has to let him go. He has to let him go if he can't get there. There's no point trying to make a sliding challenge. There isn't a covering defender, McJanet. And even if Diallo's thinking for some reason that McDonald can cut inside and find a pass, you know, let him do it. Like, you know, that kind of way, because uh, Giving away the penalty, you're practically giving away a goal, particularly when Afalabi is in the form of confidence he's in. Um, and it's just a silly challenge, really silly challenge. Um, you know, just let the player go, let the player go and see what develops. If they score, they score. But you know what I mean? You can't you can't go in with a challenge like that, really. But there he had a lot of chances after that, even they hit the bar, the chance at the end, uh, where Bowles actually headed their own corner over the bar as such. Um, McDonald then had a decent chance right at the end which could have nicked all three points or balls which would have been incredible but Derry had the majority of the really good chances in the match and uh, you know after going 2-1 up to be disappointed with drawing the match 2-2 balls I think would be pleased enough we'll talk about the upcoming fixture soon but it'd be pleased enough um, you know again you have to look at it from the start of the season Derry's aim was to win the title uh, no two ways about it Bowles' aim probably in-house, was to probably finish in Europe. Even a lot of fans thought, a lot of fans thought they wouldn't be even in the race for Europe. Some did, but some didn't. So Bowles have to be the happier as such at this minute in time. Interestingly, of course, Ford mightn't get you into Europe. So this season, we'll have to see what happens there. But they'd be satisfied with the point, I think. Derry will be disappointed. They'll see it as a, probably an opportunity missed. Um, and they have a difficult game coming up this weekend as well in Oriel Park, as the Bowles in Tala, but... We'll talk about them soon enough. But the balls too, Derry too. Let us know what you think about the game. If you're at the game, uh, your general thoughts from a balls or Derry City fan perspective. Massive game at the bottom of the table. Saw Drotter United defeat Cork City by three goals to one at Weavers Park. This is the first time Drotter beat Cork this season, and this was the fourth attempt. Um, Kusovic gave Cork the lead after 15 minutes. Um, with a deserved lead, and to be honest. Cork would be disappointed they weren't two up um, before dropping a score. The chances, Rory Keaton, um, he was a handful, probably should have scored to make it 2-0. They had opportunities. They were in control of the game, to be honest with you. Um, and then the red card happens, um, which was the right decision, I think, to be honest with you. It was a second yellow, to be fair. And it was the right decision. Uh, Dyke Steele, on 51 minutes, was sent off early in the second half. Uh, Darren Markey actually went off injured from that challenge and is a doubt for the weekend for Drottler. But the game changed completely after that, really. And Robinson scored his first league goal for the club after 61 to make it 1-1. McNally, five minutes to go, scored. A very good goal from him, actually. And Brennan scored a penalty deep in stoppage time to give Drottler a 3-1 win. An unlikely 3-1 win. 
on the general balance of play before that. Um, and Cork really feel like they missed a trick here because they drew at UCD the week before in the league. Um, they had a cup game, but the league game before that, they drew at UCD. They couldn't afford to go into the UCD and drop the games, not winning any of the games. And that's what's happened. And, you know, they're now eight points behind Drogheda. Now, luckily for them, we talk about Sligo in a second, they're six points behind Sligo. And, you know, we'll talk about Sligo in a second, but it gives them an opportunity, Cork. They're not quite dead yet because of that. And in fact, they played Sligo this weekend. So they really have to win that. I think it's, a, you know, this is their third strike, if you like, and they have to beat Sligo. But we'll get onto that soon enough. Um, but they'd be very disappointed to, to, to have dropped points here, to have at least not claimed the point because they were in control of the game, should have been two up. As for Drotten on the flip side, they'd be absolutely delighted with that because they're eight points clear. They're in the cup quarterfinals. Um, they're ahead of Sligo even at this point. So, you know, I'm not going to say they're comfortable because you can't think if you're you know, a player and squad and a manager, you're not going to say we're in a comfortable position. But when you're on the outside looking in, you'd have to say they're in a great position. Um, I didn't see them finish in ninth personally, but, you know, you always felt they might be around the conversation, all right. So they'd be absolutely delighted with the win. And, you know, in a game where they probably felt like they didn't play for the majority of the match well at all, to come away with the three points for them is absolutely huge. They might have even take, been happy enough, relatively, relatively happy with the point with five minutes to go, if I'm honest with you. But to get all three... Um, it's actually massive for them, absolutely massive. And uh, strangely enough, they're only one they're one place off Dundalk in the table, although there's an 11 point gap. Big result for Drotada, but uh, very disappointing from Cork. Let me know what you think in the comments, Drotada Cork. Fans, Shamrock Rovers beat Dundalk 1 0 at Tallis Stadium. Pico Lopez header on 62 minutes from a very good corner for Dylan Watts. Um, very good corner. It was uh, perfect for, for Lopez. Um, the trajectory in the ball was absolutely spot on. And he scored. Gaffney got a goal disallowed from off, for offside. And to be honest with you, I can't really see um, if he was on or offside um, from the angles that you can basically see from the goals. But he probably shouldn't have been offside. But um, there's no conclusive angle to say he was on or off. But it wasn't given anyway. And um, the dark had a real chance, though, didn't they? Um, they had a real chance. Um, in the game, John Martin's header, John Martin's header, he should score really. And you know, honestly, if that's who and that's that's in the net and that's one nil Dundalk, so a bit of a fine line about this one. Um, the Dundalk will be disappointed because they're kind of a little bit adrift as such in the European race. Now I know they're only four points behind Fort, but that mightn't get you into Europe. Remember, we're not sure about that. But at this point of the season, still a decent gap. And again, they've got Derry on Friday. Friday, I think, as well. So again, we'll get on to that. But there's some key games coming up this weekend. So I keep mentioning them a little bit. But they'll be disappointed not to get something out of the game. Uh, again, Archie Davis had a good game for Dundalk as well. And I don't know what they're missing, really, as such, compared to the other teams that are just that bit ahead of them at the moment. I don't know. Um, they're definitely the team under the most pressure when it comes to qualifying for Europe. They've obviously signed... Daryl Horgan, and he was involved in a good move, actually, that uh, played a lovely ball across the face, and uh, there was no one there to put it in, but I don't know. It's it's a weird one. Um, did they rely too much on Hoob in the terms of goal threat? Probably, to be honest, in a general sense. Maybe they don't have enough there. I don't know. Um, they do adopt a high line often, which I don't really like. I don't mind it in terms of if it suits the team and it suits what you're trying, but I don't know. I mean, high line would generally defenders that are uncomfortable in it or maybe lack pace it's a dangerous game and I don't know that's what Steve O'Donnell does so I don't know for, Sh- for Shamrock Rovers a massive win it's a massive win and um, they just need to from their point of view get wins eke wins any way they can they're out of the cup and usually for them and out of Europe so they're f- full focus on the league and getting that four in a row um, which was only done once before. And look, they haven't been impressive this season. There's no point saying they've only won pretty much half their games, and but they're top of the league. Um, that says more about maybe the other teams in the league, in a, in a sense, though. So, but they'd be delighted. They just keep on keeping on. And uh, obviously, massive game with Bohemians at the weekend. But good win for Shamrock Rovers. Let me know what you think in the comments, Rovers and Doc fans. Uh, UCD, St. Patrick's Athletic. I was at this game. Finished UCD and St. Patrick's. So he won at Belfield. 
Uh, Joe Redmond's header in 43 minutes was enough to give Pats the lead. And from a Pats point of view, um, this was a difficult game, a very difficult game. And uh, look, you get the three points, you get the three. It's all about the three points, really. Like, And, uh, you know, I wouldn't say Pats didn't play well, though. It's a weird one. They've had games this season where maybe they've been sluggish or didn't move the ball well um, and struggled in, let's say, at times as well. But this wasn't a game I think they really struggled in. Okay, at times, there were certain times where they could have maybe a little bit of the decision making in the final tour, but I thought they moved it well and they looked sharp. Um, Levy, Mulraney, Forrester were very elusive, picking up different positions, different areas of the pitch uh, and causing problems. And they were moving the ball quick, so it's not as if they were moving the ball slowly, you know what I mean? And it was all pedestrian or anything like that. But UCD were very well organised and haven't really seen that from UCD this season. Extremely well organised, surprisingly well organised. Um, they usually press high. They didn't press high in this game. They defended deep, but they defended deep with a purpose. They, they, you could tell everyone on the pitch knew their job and knew what they were supposed to be doing. Their marking of space was absolutely brilliant. Pats had Connor Carty up front to, um, as a long forward, he couldn't get any little pockets or holes of space to to, to even get on the ball in terms of hold up play or anything like that. Uh, now you could say Pats lacked a bit of a cutting edge at times. I think there were some crosses into the box, particularly from Mulraney in the first half. There were good crosses, but either Pats didn't have enough in the box, maybe. UCD did defend them well, again, I'll say that. Um, but then the second half, McLaughlin, who made his debut for Pats on the right, in the right back position, got two excellent balls into the box and, you know, a striker needs to be reading them. You know what I mean? Really good balls into the box, in around six yards, in between the goalkeeper and the fence and there's no one really there to, to knock it in. I think Carty might have had a chance where he didn't really get it full on to it like in that ball. Um, so they're not cutting edge in that sense, Pats. Um, but the goal from Joel Redmond, corner kick, again, disappointing for me, CD. They give away too many goals from set pieces. And it's hard to see exactly what happened. Um, um, I don't know if Andy might have felt that from his point of view, there might have been a foul in it, but it was very hard to see what happened, like, um, because we're looking at so many different things and that, but um, it was definitely a training ground manoeuvre from Pats for sure. And Redmond ended up in his own somehow and headed it. It was a good header into the net. But I don't know if it was a case of two Pats players might have pulled out into the box and the UCD defenders may have uh, been attracted to that somehow. And Redmond got in. Like it was, I was trying to find a good replay and I couldn't see a good replay to really get, you know, a sense of it. Um, but UCD counter-attacked quite good, well in this game. We're quite dangerous to counter-attack um, a number of opportunities. They had a free kick. Sean Brown played in a lovely free kick, uh, which uh, I can't remember who got the header onto it, actually. Um, I remember it at the time. I can't remember now. And Linus makes a good save. And they had a couple of little um, counter-attacks that were dangerous. And then in the second half, last 15, 10, 10, 15 minutes, there was a sense that UCD could score, to be honest with you. Um, and they had a chance for Brennan hits a shot at the edge of the area and Linus, it takes a deflection, I think, and Linus makes a save, but it comes out and Kinsley Bishop hits it and hits the post that Linus beaten. Linus is beaten. Uh, Pats were a little bit all over the place at that point as well and that was a real chance. And then Harvey O'Brien, who came on and played up front, actually, funnily enough, the defender. Uh, good ball into the box of Higgins, got in between the two Pats central defenders and not an easy chance, but definitely a scoreable chance where he volleys it. Um, could he have controlled it? I think it would have been difficult to do that though because the chance might have gone as well so you're taking the risk there but they had opportunities there and you could tell by the end the Pats were delighted to get away with the three points to be fair and uh, Andy Moyler was definitely pleased with the attitude and the performance of the players and their application on the whole and it'd be interesting to see moving forward because they make themselves hard to beat and I always think, I know UCD, people like to, like to see UCD play free-flowing football, et cetera, et cetera, but it made themselves very hard to beat. And it's actually a good three points for Pats, I have to say. Very good three points for Pats. Then on Saturday, we had Sliger Rovers and Shelburne, and um, Mark Coyle's goal was enough to, to get the three points for Shelburne, their second win in the showgrounds this season. Suddenly, Shelburne are only three, four points themselves off European place. Um you know, can and again an interesting game of Pats on Friday. Can they enough, get enough wins to get in there? I don't know. Well, if Dundalk can, they can, I suppose. But a good result on the roll for them, and um, it's a game they deserve to win. To be fair, and um, they had a number of chances in the game. Caffrey had a chance. We probably should have scored, say by Walsh. 
And um, Walsh should be disappointed with the goal he conceded, the 18 year old, but he did make a good penalty save um, from Moylan later on. I don't think Moylan would be too happy with, with Manny Smith because he scored the original penalty. Smith encroached too early, and um, I think Moylan lost his focus a little bit and, and went on to, because um, he coolly just smashed the first penalty, second penalty, trying to smash really. Um, you know, it can be difficult that when you have to take the penalty again. Sometimes you think, should someone else take it? It's hard to know, doesn't it? Um, but he won't be impressed with Manny Smith. But look, they got the three points in the end. They deserve to win it. And, you know, it's a good three points for Shelburne. And yeah, yeah, they're in the conversation. They're in the conversation. I mean, if they were to beat Pats on Friday, we'll get into that in a minute. You know what I mean? And then they're really in it. But I'd say they're the outside bet as such. But they have a chance. But they'd be delighted with the win. It's a good three points for them to go up there to slide and get the win and fully deserve the win from Sligo's point of view, though. Um, they're not out of it yet they're only six points out of Cork and they have a very novice goalkeeper now in goal 18 year old Walsh even though he done quite well but you know prone to a mistake like that um, Matt is not there now there's no striker they look toothless up front Pedro's come in and um, you know he we don't know he might be good but he hasn't settled obviously he's only had a few games and it's hard to see that, I've said this before when Matt was out of the team it's hard to see where the goals are going to come from but they're going to have to score goals quickly um, because if they get into a dogfight with Cork, um, will they have to fight is the question. You know, I don't know. I don't know. But um, disappointing stuff from them, really. Um, and it ended in a, in a defeat, really. But we'll get on to Friday's fixtures and we have some great fixtures, really, do we? I'll start off with Drotta and UCD, though, because there's an opportunity as well for Drotta to really cement themselves now and um, that said, from what I've seen from UCD on Friday, if they bring, bring that application to Weaver's Park um, and are difficult to beat, it could be a difficult game for Drogheda. But it would be interesting to see if they revert to maybe pressing high and trying to attack more. And Not that they didn't try to attack against Pats, but I mean try to attack more in terms of holding the ball and having possession of the football. Um, but they adopted a very much counter-attacking game against against uh, against Pats. Will they do the same against Drotted? I'd be intrigued to see if they do or not. If they did, it could be a difficult game for Drotted, you know, very difficult game for Drotted. Um, but it's one of them where Drotted, look, Drotted wouldn't be happy with a point, but a point wouldn't be a disaster for them because of the results that they've had uh, recently. Let's be really sure defeat wouldn't be a disaster possibly for them either, but um, a win would really prop them up, wouldn't it? They'll really prop them up. For UCD, I was very impressed with Sean Brennan the other day. Actually, he was at Drotted this season, of course, and I thought he was excellent against Pat. So uh, I'm sure he'll want to prove a point at Weaver's Park as well. Um, it's a difficult one to predict, though. I think Drotted will nick it, but it won't be easy. 2 1 Drotted for me. Uh, the other games, you'd have to say, are all huge games, aren't they? I mean, Cork City and Sligo. I mean, this is, I said about Cork their third strike, this is their chance, their last chance in many ways. If they don't beat Sligo, you know, the run of games where they've UCD dropped in Sligo, if they don't get a win out of any of those, and this is their last chance to get the win, you know, you probably have to say they don't deserve to finish outside ninth. If Sligo were to win this match, I think it's done then, pretty much. I think it's done. Sligo have to come and put in a performance there and put in a fight. Um, They really do, but as I said earlier, they have to find goals from somewhere. Have to find goals for somewhere. Did you know if the likes of Hartman and the team is capable of scoring a goal? Um, and after that, you're going to M. You know what I mean? You're struggling a bit with Saigo in, in that regard. And don't think their midfield has been as good this season as previous years either, to be honest. Um, the last couple of seasons. Cork. Cork to have roller Keaton in front. You know what I mean? He's a menace. He can run the challenge, he can hold the ball, he can get in behind, he can drop deep, and he can score goals. Um, and that could be the difference here in Turner's Cross, I think. Um, probably not an awful lot between both sides in reality. Massive, massive game. There's a massive goal difference swing as well, by the way. Um, Sliger are minus eight, Cork are minus 22. I have a feeling Cork might nick this one and um, put Sliger on a bit of pressure. I think 1 0 Cork City for me. Uh, let me know your predictions in the comments for all these games as well, by the way, or games involving your team, whichever you like yourself. Dundalk and Derry, the amount of times Dundalk and Derry at Oriel Park have finished 2 2. Dundalk and Derry fans will know that too well. Um, this is a really, really interesting game because this Dundalk have to feel to themselves. There's a there's still a decent chunk of games left. 
Still a decent chunk of games left. There's eight games left. Dundalk are still in the cup. But they'll feel, I think, that like they may need to finish top three, let alone top four. I think they'll feel like they have to win this game. This is, feels like a must win for me. And to be honest, I think it's a must win for Derry as well, which is going to be really intriguing because I think Derry City, um, you know, if they were to drop points here, even if they get a point, hypothetically in 48, um, even if Shamrock Rovers was a draw against Bowles, uh, the opportunities are running out and running out and running out, aren't they? Like how many opportunities do you want type thing? So I think it's a must win for two for both teams. So it could be a bit cagey, but then it could be very open at the same time. Uh, who can surely be back in the team for Dundalk for this one? He does well against Derry, does well against most teams, to be honest. Um, and Derry will be happy with the way they created the opportunities against Bowles, I think, to be honest. Um, maybe they haven't quite done that in a while. So, of course, we've got Duffy and McElhenney as the former clubs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's a really difficult one to judge. Derry are the better side, there's no doubt about it. They are the better side. Um, but they have had their difficulties at Oriel Park against Dundalk, haven't they, as well? Last chance for Derry, I think, to really properly get into this title race proper, in my opinion, uh, regardless of the result of Tala, in my personal opinion. Dundalk can't afford, I think, probably can't afford to to lose the game. Of course, if they lose to Derry for a start, they're six points off Derry and Derry have a game in hand. Um, Even if Pats then were to draw, let's say, against Shelburne, um, actually, even if Pats were to lose, like, you know what I mean? They'd still be a bit behind. So, look, they have to, I think they have to win Dundalk as well. So, really intriguing game. Derry the better players. They're the better footballers. Who can handle the pressure, though? Uh, who can handle the pressure? I don't know. I can't see Dundalk winning, which means they'll probably win it. I can see a draw, which will do neither team any good in reality. But I'm going to go for Derry just. 2 1 Derry City. Don't be surprised if it's 2 2. Um, where else have we? Shelburne and Pats, massive, massive Dublin derby. Interestingly, the same week as another massive Dublin derby. But I've always said this that between around 1990, you could say 94 ish to 2004 ish, this was the, the biggest Dublin derby in, in Ireland. In reality, it was. Um, do you know what I mean? And um, there was a real grudge, if you like, between both clubs. Both clubs were often competing as well at the top end of the table and, you know, in cups and stuff like that as well. So, um, and that was lost. That was lost when Shelburne went to the first division um, for, for quite a number of years. But there's a sense that's coming back a little bit. They played three times a season already. Pats have won every time 1-0. So they've been very tight. Shelburne have only lost five games and three of them are against Pats. Very, very tight games. Extremely tight games. Uh, more or less decided, if not all decided, by set pieces. Uh, Pats won one nil at Tulsa Park last time out. Sam Curse from corner, so it will be tight again. Pats are struggling to score goals at the moment. To be honest, um, you know Chris Forrest was a top scorer, fair enough, um, but it's a strange because Pats are actually the second highest scorers in the league behind Shamrock Rovers. But of late, they've struggled to score goals. They're not getting many, many goals from the strikers. It'd be interesting to see if Levy plays against Shelburne as well. But you know Shelburne, will they sit deep? Yeah, probably. Um, and make it difficult for Pats. You'd imagine Pats will have most of the ball. Pats have kept four clean sheets in a row since Joe Redmond returned as well. And Jay McGrath looks very good alongside him, in my opinion. Um, it's difficult because it's difficult to see if it's four tight games that Pats win every single one of them. So, you know, you think to yourself that surely they've been all so tight that Shelburne have to get a result at some point, wouldn't you? Um. And Pats are due to concede a goal. Shelburne hasn't scored against Pats this season. <laughs> There's so much there. Um, it's a difficult one. I think a point for Pats in terms of the race for Europe actually isn't a bad result. If you're talking about Pats entering a proper championship challenge, then a point isn't good enough in my opinion. But I see it more as a top three scenario for Pats. So a point there isn't bad. A point, is a point good for Shelburne though? Again, it depends on the circumstances of the match. Um. Again, in terms of maybe getting into the top three or four, no, it probably isn't a good result for Shelburne. But many didn't expect Shelburne to be even, at this point season, even to be talking of an outside chance of it. 
But it's an opportunity. And Damien Duff will be saying to his players, look, we owe them one. Let's be real. He'll be saying that. We owe them one. We've lost three times this season, tight games. Uh, do you want to end up in the losing team again? Um, and he'd be playing into all that. And he'd be playing into the fact that this is an opportunity for us to put ourselves seriously in the European conversation. And it is. Um, it's an interesting one. It's an interesting one. I do see a tight game. I sense this one's going to be a draw, though. Um, I think Carty's done okay for Pats up front, but he doesn't score goals. But I still can't see them changing that too much. Pats are a better midfield in terms of possession footballers, don't they? But they'll have most of the ball, I'd imagine. But look, it's... um. If Pats go in front, Shelburne might lose a bit of confidence, though, because it might be a here-we-go-again scenario type thing. But I'm going to say a one-all draw here, so let me know in the comments, Shelburne Pats fans, what you think score will be. And finally, we have Shamrock Rovers and Bohemians, and uh, it's first against fourth, and it's a massive game. Again, if Bowles want to get into a title race, they have to win this. There's no doubt about that. But look, in all honesty, that's not really their aim. Um in reality, Rovers can go 10 points clear, Bowles with a win, and there's an opportunity for Rovers or other teams likely to drop points to stake a claim. They have beaten um, Bowles twice a season and drawn with them once as well. Um, usually Bowles have a good record against Rovers, but Rovers turned that round a little bit this season. 2-0, 2-0 in the 2-2 draw at Daily Mount, which was a really good game. I think it was nil nil at half-time, if I remember correctly. Um, wasn't it? Yeah. So... This one's obviously a Tallis Stadium. And um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how balls get on this game. Will Danny Grant start? Uh, probably not fully fit yet. He's looked sharp when he's played. Uh, a lot of pace in the counter attack with Clark Connolly, etc. And obviously the strength and pace of Afalabi. Um, Liam Burt has been playing the last few games for Rovers. Um, could he get the winner? <laughs> um, it's likely he'll play in this game as well. He has in injury problems as well. So Liam Burt will probably be playing in this game as well. Um, would a draw be a good result for Bowles? It wouldn't be a bad result, let's be honest, in, in the race for Europe, and uh, especially if uh, other teams around them drop points and such as well. It wouldn't be a bad result for Bowles to get a point in reality. Um, as it wouldn't be a bad result for Shamrock Rovers, particularly if, say, Pats weren't to win, who are actually the closest in the table at the moment. So um, I think Bowles would accept the point more of a feeling than Rovers. I think Rovers will be really looking to win it whereas Bowles if someone offered him a point now they would say yeah we might nick it but yeah we kind of would take a point as well whereas Rovers might think we're home we want to be winning this game it's a real opportunity for us to push on now in the last number of games this season and and uh, really stake a claim for this four in a row um, feeling this one be tighter there's been goals like Rovers have scored two in all fixtures this season. Balls have scored two and one in the 2 2 draw. I feel this is going to be like a 1 0 or a 0 0 or even a 1 all type job. I have a feeling I can't see someone getting two goals. They might do, of course. It's just that sense that um, Rovers will be looking to lock down James Clark. I think if you lock down James Clark, easier said than done. Um, you lock down Afalabi a lot. I think I think that's a big thing. Clark is very key to Afalabi. Uh, Rovers are better in midfield, of course, as well. Uh, overall, I think, um, and maybe have better midfield options per se uh, on the bench. But look, they'll be looking to start in the front foot. They they gave up opportunities against Dundalk, which weren't taken, to be fair. So Bowles will be looking at that, I'm sure. Um, and you have to remember, Jack Byrne is still out. And, you know, they're not half the team without Jack Byrne, are they? And you know, still without those full backs, wing backs that give them power and a bit, a bit of pace, really, like, you know, a bit of uh, agility in Clark and Ferruja. Them two and Byrne are big, big losses. Like, they're key players in the system that play. Key, Jack Byrne's a key player anyway. Uh, whereas Bowles have their key players available. So, I don't know. I don't know. Um. I feel I'm, I'm going to go for a draw here. I'm going to go with one all. So let me know in the comments, Shamrock Rovers, Bowls fans. Give me a prediction what you think the score will be. Um, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know your thoughts on the games last weekend. Subscribe to the channel. Hit your bell notification button. And we'll talk to you soon. Good luck.